Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo. FF7R Demo. FF7RD. So many abbreviations. Yes, the Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo is here. You know me, late to the party. I want to talk about it because Final Fantasy VII, huge impact on my gaming life. The demo's here. I'm just waiting for April to arrive so I can play the full game, but let's talk about this demo. So I sat down to take in the, the breadth of this game. I played it last week when it was released, and I, I needed to collect my thoughts instead of doing a just quick knee-jerk reaction. I did a full playthrough. I recorded my playthrough for my own, uh, reasons. Oh, a tuft of Phoenix Down. But going all the way back to the top, Final Fantasy VII, this is going to be the demo of demos. I rarely play demos. This is one I had to play. The excitement is there. I am cautiously optimistic. I'm a little less cautious now. So first, starting off from the beginning, I was sort of in awe with interest uh, to go into this. I just didn't know what to expect. I. I was so zoned in, and when the game finally started up, I mean, I felt moved. The nostalgia got me in that opening cutscene. It was fresh, but also memorable, but also reminded me of the past. It was, it was just great. That opening movie, it uh, it nailed it for me. But go going even before that, when you first start up the demo, you get asked about the the game mode controls. I was like, game mode controls, what what do we got here? What do we got here? Inverted X, inverted Y? And why would you need to invert the X? I love when I press right and turn left. Huh? Maybe that's for some people. I just played on the normal control scheme because I assumed that was for controlling the camera, which is what it ended up being. And then you've got to choose classic, easy, or normal. Classic mode is the thing I was super excited to hear about, which allowed for supposedly turn-based controls. It's classic, remember? It's like the classic turn-based controls. Uh, no, it is not. Let's talk about these different modes. Normal is the standard gameplay where you attack, that fills up your ATB gauge, you physically control those attacks and select those attacks and inputs, and then as you attack more and guard and dodge and roll, you'll be able to input your commands, which you do technically pause the game, no matter what mode you're in, and select those commands, whether it's casting a spell from your materia, using an item, uh, a special ability, so on and so forth, limit breaks. That's how that works. Easy mode, it's just super easy. You don't really have to focus on the attacking. And then classic mode is... <sighs> it's not what they said it was going to be. And here's the thing, uh, a couple of people told me, oh, Dave, you're gonna love the demo. Just just play it on classic mode, it'll be great. It'll, it'll feel great. And I was like, really? Because classic mode, I just assumed would be the way that I would choose to play it. I like the strategy, I like the tactics of taking the time to go through turn-based actions, input commands, and see how things play out on the battlefield. I'm not a big fan of hack and slashy action, and then every once in a while, oh, let me select this. Let me select this. And then, blah, 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 blah. It's not really what I intended to enjoy, but we'll get to the normal mode later. So this classic mode, your character will automatically attack. So you'll be walking through and nice battle and will occur. So. That's where the computer takes over and attacks for you. And in the very first scene when you go into classic mode, it's ridiculous. You, you immediately just and everything's dead in like a split second. So you don't even get a chance to put in any commands in that first battle when you start the demo. It's kind of ridiculous, and that's that aspect of classic mode is in easy mode. So it's forcing you to play on easy, and it takes away half of what the game is. That's the gameplay. And all you do is put in commands when the ATB gauge fills up. That's it. So it's not allowing you to do turn-based strategic combat, what classic mode allows you to do is less of playing the game. That's it. You basically cut out 60, 70% of the gameplay 
so you can just sit back, watch Cloud fling and hop all over the place, and then when it fills up, oh, I'm gonna cast fire. There we go. Oh, this is fun. Gaming. I'm gaming. Look at how hard I'm gaming right now. No, classic mode, garbage. I get it. They put it in there to sort of appease these old school fans like myself, and I actually hated it. I thought it was stupid. And I'm not usually the a taker of hots when it comes to things like that, but I hate it. I think classic mode is useless. It is unnecessary. I thought normal mode was just fine. It wasn't as hack and slashy, and it wasn't as mm, mind off, finger down as Final Fantasy XV was, where it just felt so mindless until you get into the really intense battles. It works. Normal mode works. And it really does allow you to have that sort of, just a taste of nostalgia with the turn-based selection of commands, with casting your materia and using items and switching characters. It works. I like it. It's better than Final Fantasy XV's battle system. It's probably the best way to do a sort of classic style RPG without just being turn-based and going into a battle combat scenario where you pick every action and you're not moving around. Because you can't really do a true classic mode the way this game is built. I see why they put it in there the way that they did. There's no way it could have been... Alright, so the ATB gauge fills up. Now you need to choose an action of, oh, do you want to walk over to that monster? Okay, so you're going to input that. That's your action. You'd have to basically build a Dungeons & Dragons style game, sort of like Baldur's Gate 3, of which we've seen gameplay of now, where you'd have to select a distance to walk, and that'd be an action. Then you'd have to use an action to cast a spell or whatever. You can't have that side-by-side -side battle combat like you would hope to have had based on the old game. It's just impossible the way that this is developed, and that doesn't make me mad at all. They'd have to rebuild the game from the ground up to make a true classic mode the way they sort of alluded that it was going to be, and it was definitely not turn-based strategic combat as we know and love. Is this chair a little farty? It's an old, it's a retro chair. It's a little farty. I apologize. It adds to the, it'll add to the soundscape. It's good. Was that, no, was that me? No, that was the chair. We'll say that was the chair. So stay away from classic mode. Normal mode is just fine. So now we are force thrust into this demo. It picks up right where the original game starts. It's exactly the same sort of setup. You're hopping off the train and I was just, I had goose bumps. I was so excited. It just, it just was so crazy to see this old, old game now realized with new technology it's awesome. It really is something to experience for yourself. And it's going to bring in, I think, it's going to bring in people who've never played Final Fantasy VII. And it might be difficult for them to go back, but I highly, highly recommend you go back and experience the original if you never have. I mean, who hasn't played the original? Uh, if that's you, try it. At least play the same amount of the demo in the original, just to, just to see how far things have come. It's, it's insane. Beautiful presentation. The characters look great. These characters are what I may have imagined when I played the original. These little blocky characters, polygonal, polygonal characters. This is what I imagined them looking like in the real world. They knocked it out of the freaking park. I would have liked a little more color. A little brighter. It's very dark, but other than that, choice. The maps. I know they had very little to work off of. You know these pre-rendered backgrounds from the original on PlayStation One, and they have brought these maps and these worlds and these areas to life in Final Fantasy VII Remake. It looks really, really good, and I love that the path you're sort of taking through the demo, which is again, it's the first avalanche attack terrorist attack on the Mako reactor. Funny story, I used to say Mako, because there's no voice acting in the original. I was like, Mako? Oh, the source of energy is Mako. It's Mako. M-A-K-O Mako. No, Mako. Mako energy. The Mako reactor. It took me many years to start saying Mako instead of Mako. But going through these maps and going through that first Mako reactor detonation explosion where you're planning to blow up the reactor... It's right, it just feels like it hits all those beats. Obviously there's a little bit of extra dialogue. I saw somebody 
Sorry I can't give you credit for the thing I disagree with. Somebody was complaining that the dialogue seems so cheesy and doesn't work now. It's just silly, the way that they're having conversation. Who cares? Who cares that it's cheesy? Okay, it's, it's a ridiculous game. Have you seen his sword? The man has a gun arm. What? A herd of chocobos can be summoned to run over and trample your enemies, Lion King style. What do you, what do you want? Does it have, does everything have to be so serious? Get over yourself, whoever you were, I don't remember. It was an article I saw in passing, talking about the cheesy dialogue. Maybe difficult to get over the cheesy sort of dialogue readings, blah, blah, blah. It's fun, okay? Just hearing Barrett's conversation on the elevator, talking about the cries of the planet. I loved it, because that's how I imagined him. He was such a, like, environmentalist, hard-headed environmentalist. He just doesn't seem like the type of guy that would be this sort of hippie, let's save the planet minded dude in this big bulky man's man exterior it's it's perfect barrett is awesome man i love barrett cloud is great it's just that typical like eh, whatever protagonist that he was in the original you know you got you got jesse biggs and wedge getting a little bit more spotlight we'll see what happens with them in the actual game because this game, as far as I can tell, is going to take place... I'm sticking to what I said back when the initial trailer came out. It's going to take place in Midgar. The game very unlikely will leave Midgar. And those of you who know Final Fantasy VII very well, the first few hours are spent in Midgar. It feels longer than it is because Midgar is such a lively world with so much unique design and so many characters that you meet in the time that you spend in Midgar that when you are sort of forced out, there's this crazy motorcycle chase and you reach the edge of Midgar and you know you can't go back. Shinra wants you. They want you dead. They want Avalanche gone. You have to move on and you head to the town of Calm and that's when the world map opens up. You're now in this huge world. I remember the first time I played it, it was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a classic RPG with a world map, Final Fantasy. Style. I, I can walk to the next town in this open overworld map. So I think they're going to stop right before you leave. And I've seen key art. There's been art, a screenshot of Barrett and Red 13 and Cloud and standing at the edge of the highway after that chase, looking out into the horizon. I have a feeling that's where the game, the first part of the game will end. Now, right now, Midgar is going to be blown up. You're going to be able to visit parts of the slums that you never got to see, sectors you never got to visit. It's going to be a very expanded story. There's going to be new characters probably, good or bad, say what you will about that. But obviously, this is a remake. It needs to <laughs> continue on past the Midgar area. That's going to be in part two, part three, whatever they end up calling those parts. Square Enix Enix hasn't really said much about future entries in this series, so it's sort of interesting... They're really focusing on, oh, no, this is, maybe they don't want people who aren't informed to know that this is just part one, or this is just a piece of an overarching tale that will be told over many, many years. Because I can understand, it's like, I'm investing a full retail price into this one piece of a larger experience, and I gotta wait another three, four years for the next part? I don't know how they're gonna handle the overworld. I don't know. Future, future, future. In the demo, you go through that first reactor battle, and then it kind of stops and gives you some, like, little tastes of what else is going to be in the game. Combat's fine. Uh, you get to select your materia the way that I would expect. You can see the materia in the buster sword slots, which is cool. I'm excited to see other weapons and how you sort of collect those. You're still opening treasure chests as you go through. You're using potions. There's ethers. At first, I was nervous, because when I first got control of Cloud, he felt very heavy. And initially, you'd think, oh, well, that was probably on purpose. He has a gigantic heavy sword on his back. Of course, he's going to slug along a little bit, and he's going to struggle. But it, I didn't really notice it later on. I think it's just the way the controls work, just that input. It's fine. It's fine. It didn't feel too heavy once I got used to sort of the controls. I had some complaints about the camera. Everything felt very close. When I was in battle, especially with the guard dogs, they're like running all over the place. I'm trying to get over and attack them, and I'm like 
attacking nothing because the camera was a little too close and when I was hitting them, I didn't even see the enemy that I was beating up and slashing because the camera was a little too close. And I was like, well, this is dumb. Later realizing you can go into the settings and actually move the camera back. So it's a wider view uh, <laughs> by like, there's like three settings. So even at the widest setting, it wasn't quite as wide as I would have liked it to have been. There is so much for the nostalgic person of the original in this demo. I mean, just, just climbing up the ladders like you did in the original or, you know, flirting with Jesse. Jesse is way too obvious as predicted with her flirtatiousness. She's like, mm, what's his, what's his name again? Oh, you're choosing me over the reactor? That's sweet, but I'll wait my turn. Go blow her mind. So, you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but are you guys close? <laughs> oh, Cloud is his name. Ooh. Well, in my game, his name was Dave. And in my very first game of Final Fantasy VII, his name was Dave War, all caps, D-A-V-E space W-A-R-R, -R, because I I don't know what I was doing. I was just, I was like, oh yeah, I can name my character just like the old days. I'm Dave War, eh. So stupid. But that game, save was lost to time. Corrupted memory card, so from then on, it was just Dave. Oh, another fun little thing is that after killing some enemies, Barrett hums the victory fanfare thing. It was like, duh, 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 duh. That was, that was cute. That was precious. <laughs> but I have to say, I'm very impressed at how true to the original it stayed while also throwing in its own little bits of originality here and there to uh, spice it up and sort of sculpt out more of what this world is going to be when it releases. And you know what's really authentic in this game is the music, the score is fantastic. These interpretations of the original music, it, it doesn't feel generic, it's just, oh, these orchestral yum-yums that are happening in this game. So good. And some of the musical stings extend into original territory, but it's still within that same feeling. Nobu Imatsu's original score is uh, undefeatable. Undefeatable. The only thing I miss is some of those very, like the clangy sort of metallic uh, instrument synths that were used in the original. It would be nice to hear a little bit more of that. But even in the original, right before Final Fantasy VII, the logo shows up in that original cutscene. They nailed that sound, that I even got, I was like, ooh, it's coming. I just knew it when I was playing the demo. <sighs> you get me with your nostalgia, you son of a gun. Now, the, the normal mode was not necessarily difficult, but I will say, I am an RPG digital hoarder. So when it comes to items in RPGs, I hoard them. When it comes to weapons, I hoard them. I'm that guy that when you check out the shop and there's weapons available to purchase for characters you don't even have yet, and they're like crappy basic weapons, I buy all of them. That's my thing. In RPGs, I must own, assuming there's not an inventory limit, a master inventory limit, I will buy one of every item and weapon that you can get throughout the game. That's sort of my goal is to collect one of every weapon for every character in the game. Even if I don't need it, even if it's weaker than the weapon I have now. It's a weird thing I do. I apologize. And in this game, I, I was forced to use my consumables very quickly. I had to drop some potions. I don't think I've ever used a potion, maybe one potion, in the entirety of that first Mako reactor attack. Uh, in the original game. this I, mean, I was using potions left and right. So good lord, bring it on. Uh, I was also happy that your MP and HP did not automatically regenerate. That's a big misstep that I think some of these newer modern RPGs are making where over time when you're out of battle, you'll just slowly heal up and your MP will slowly restore. That's lame. You gotta use ethers, or I'm assuming down the road you'll have to rest or use potions to heal your, or use cure to heal your characters up. I think that is awesome. I'm very happy to see that. Now there are these uh, uh, destructible things. Honestly, why attack the enemies in the game when you can attack random boxes and caution signs and uh, slippery when wet symbols? Oh, 
in some of these boxes, you actually have to destroy these Mako Shinra boxes, which give you some Mako energy and replenish some of your MP if you break them. And you can find potions and things. Especially when I reached Guard Scorpion, I had to use uh, a lot of potions there. But there were no deaths. I had a no-death run. Congratulations on your no-death run in a demo. Uh, but the Guard Scorpion fight was fine. He, he, a lot more to him. But again, you gotta cast that bolt. Uh, the staggering system seemed fine. I, I liked knocking him down a peg and just really getting in there with the Buster Sword. It's just so cool to see those flourishes with the Buster Sword that are completely unrealistic for the size of that sword. It was really cool that when you finally set the charge to blow up the Mako reactor, you, you have to put in a time limit, which was interesting, 20 or 30 minutes. Of course, 20 minutes, I mean, come on, I'm no, I'm no noob, no punk noob. So you set the timer, and the timer is that same neon design from the original timers in Final Fantasy VII. Oh, what a beautiful nod. The attention to detail. I can see why the game got delayed to April, so they can really polish it up. I am super excited. Definitely sounds like I'm just giving some serious mouth hugs to this Final Fantasy VII demo, but it is well-deserved. They did it right. Is it good? Yes. Is the game going to be amazing? That is to be seen. I cannot guarantee that level of judgment based on a simple demo, because this is just the basics, very, very basic. Now, if the game stays this way, it would get so repetitive if this is all the game is. I've been looking at some things online. You can see the way that you handle materia combinations. So there's going to be some new stuff. i got to get over my thing. Actually, that wasn't in the original. Why is it in this? But hey, they're giving me Cactuar. I love Cactuar. Cactuar is in the game, assuming you pre-order the right edition, which uh, <laughs> I know I did for Cactuar. Armor and accessory slots look like they're set up exactly the same as the original, so getting in and dealing with the magic, you're, it, it's going to be fun. I'm excited to see what level of depth you can get into with the Materia combinations. You weren't messing with Materia much in this demo, aside from casting your spells Fire and Bolt. You'll definitely be able to change your weapon, and you'll see that new weapon, just like yeah, I, I've seen the Nail Bat. I've seen the Nail Bat in screenshots. It's a bat with nails in it The Cloud uses. Sorry. Red 13 looks awesome, though I've heard the rumor is you don't actually battle with Red 13 because he shows up so late in the game. He's just kind of there with you. Is what it is. You'll have to wait for part two. But the thing I look forward to the most with Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting a chance to relive all of these amazing moments from the original game with these characters that I have grown to love over the years and I've gone back to and to be able to re-experience these events and this gameplay and this story without having to go back to just the original game and have a new way to experience these stories with these characters is what I'm probably the most excited for. It's just going to be so fun to get these these fun nods to the original, but also enjoy some of the new experiences they're showing up. I am super positive, maybe annoyingly positive, about Final Fantasy Remake of the Seven variety. I mean, hey, when I was a, a much more wee, little meaning, YouTube channel, when I reached 7,777 subscribers, what did I do to celebrate? I did a video about the Lucky Sevens trick in Final Fantasy VII, which I had never accomplished in my original playthroughs when I was much younger, and I was able to pull it off for that video, getting the Lucky Sevens. Will Lucky Sevens happen in Final Fantasy VII Remake? I doubt it, unless your HP reaches higher than 7777. So I have a feeling there's no way that's going to happen in the original game. We'll just have to see when it comes to loading your part one remake data into the next game. Is that how it's going to work? You're going to sweep it in it? You're going to load it in? Oh, man. I'm super excited. Can't wait to play Final Fantasy VII Remake when it officially launches and get into some materia. I'll be sure to share my thoughts when that comes out nice and late and wrong because you know what? I'm not... Ooh, the demo comes out. I have to make a video within the first 30 minutes or, or nobody's going to watch it. Ah! That's not why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because I want to and I want to share my thoughts with you and hopefully you've been interested to hear my thoughts on Final Fantasy VII Remake demo. Remember, until Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out in April, stay digitally distracted with something else, whatever that may be.
Maybe you could play some Kunio Kun games or something. There was a new game that came out. Hmm? Or stare at your collection of uh, Final Fantasy Kotobukiya statues. That's what I'm gonna do. See you soon. Stop it. Stop.